Hi, you teacher friends. Today, I'm going to show you five sample trial lessons that you could do with your students on italki or whatever online platform you use to teach English. Um, when I first started on italki, uh, there was nothing really there for me to take, to use with my students. I didn't really know what to do. And a few train wrecks later, I finally got myself going and I found what worked and what didn't. Hopefully this could save you a little bit of hassle, but I want to remind all of you that every student, every teacher has their own style, right? And this might not specifically be your style. Um, you might want to take some of these activities and adapt them a little bit so that they work for you, so that they work for your students. I tried to find uh, topics that would be adaptable for students of different levels students of different ages and from different nationalities, right? But uh, these are just some ideas for new teachers and returning teachers to get you started in thinking of what to do with your students in that 30 minute trial lesson. And it's very important to mention that it is 30 minutes. So typically I structure my trial lessons 10 minutes for introduction, um, introductions, and then a couple activities just to test their knowledge, right? Test their abilities. Typically I use um, would you rather questions to test their, um, uh, their use of conditionals, but you could also use uh, listing activities. You could use word association activities possibly. You could give them different categories and they need to categorize the words. Um, I also like to use pictures. So I like to give them a picture and they have to ask questions about the picture. Um, you could also uh, give them pictures and have them try to find specific things as well. Um, and usually that lasts the first 10 minutes of class. And from there, I have um, 10 minute a 10 minute short quick lesson and I explain this is their chance to see me as a teacher it's not my time to judge them they are judging me this is what my style is as a teacher so remember italki teachers uh, modify this uh, to reflect your personality and your approach to teaching um, give them a taste of what they'll be paying for in the future and the third part, the last 10 minutes, is just conversation and making a plan for the future. So these five topics here are basically the, the meat, uh, the meat and potatoes, the middle of the sandwich. First things first, I had to choose some topics. What are some topics that are uncontroversial, ideally, um, that uh, could be adapted, that could relate to students of all walks of life, all different age groups? And that is, and these are uh, food, health or fitness, nature, travel, and time. Um, these, uh, you know, especially travel is probably the go-to. It's like the cliche topic that every ESL student has to take 10, 20, 30 times. So I really suggest if you choose travel to try to adapt it, to make it a little bit more spicy and a little bit more interesting. Um, time, however, is one that students may not think about as often. And this might be particularly uh, interesting to your older level students. Um, so first, if we go with food, this is an example of a uh, topic of a uh, quick plan you could do with food. You could go ahead on go on to Google and uh, f type in food spot the difference. You'll see different uh, pictures that are similar and uh, you could give this link to your students and tell them to find the difference between the pictures. This gets them talking, it gets them uh, engaged and it also gets them using different comparative words which could be really useful and transition words as well. Um, after that, you could ask some questions about this picture, right? You could show them a, maybe a link of different meals and maybe ask them which, which meal do you think is the tastiest? Which one would be the saltiest or um, ha have the most sugar perhaps? Which one would be the sweetest, the sourest? right? Uh, or most sour, <laughs> uh, you, you could find uh, different ways to incorporate new vocabulary in here. 
you could ask them which type of food would be the most popular in their country. Yeah. And at the end, you could have them make a recipe. If you want, you could even give them steps of a recipe and have them put them in order, right? Especially if they're a lower level student, I think it's better to incorporate more reading into these activities than to just put all the onus on them using their own resources, right? Um, so giving them vocabulary could be really useful and helping them along the way. And when you start with these topics, it's going to be scary. It'll, it'll, it'll be tough at first to really find out. But after you do this 20 or 30 times with the uh, different trial lessons, you're going to find, you're going to know what level this student is from the second activity. And that's why we have these um, activities at the beginning to test their level. But ideally you'll be 15 minutes in and you'll have a rough idea of what some strengths and weaknesses are. Okay, topic number two is nature. All right, so uh, the first thing you could do, hop on a Google, spot the issue nature, spot the environmental issue pictures, blah, blah, blah. I found some pictures uh, where there are different problems, like eco unfriendly issues in the picture. And basically your student just has to find them right? What, what are the issues, right? So there's no right or wrong answer because I mean, this could be dependent on their own walk of life and what they judge to be eco-friendly or not e eco-friendly, right? So I think especially for the first class, um, try to allow your student to freely express themselves um, um, instead of trying to impede your own views and opinions too much. However, it is great for you to interact and to um, engage yourself and to uh, try to become part of the experience as well, because I think that also takes some of the stress off the student. You just need to pick the time and place. Um, okay, after that, you could do a quick carbon footprint questionnaire. So you could find out what the carbon footprint is of the student or yourself. Um, and at the end, you could show them maybe a water waste video, different ways of wasting water. And you could ask them if they're guilty of it and tell, tell them if you're guilty of it as well. All right, topic number three, health. One of my favorite activities is to show students a list of uh, difficult yoga poses. Yeah, it doesn't seem tricky, but it's actually really difficult to explain the position of body parts, right? So when you talk about a yoga pose, this could be put your right foot in front of you, bend your knee at a, at a 90 degree angle, lunge your left foot behind you or lag your left foot behind you, keep your uh, right hand um, directly above, uh, hovering directly above your right knee or something like that. Like we're using prepositions, we're using different words and vocabulary that could be a little bit tricky and challenging. And uh, that's what you want. Um, but, but again, um, it depends on the student. So maybe you could start them with simple poses if it's a, uh, if it's a lower level student and then you can build them up to more trick to trickier uh, poses, yeah. Um, after that, you could um, order a uh, list of activities, right? So maybe you could find a list of activities like of exercises how, um, or ways to be healthy, right? And they could order it um, from the activity that they like the most, hiking, to the activity they like the least, swimming, yeah. Um, so we're ordering and then at the end, maybe you could do a little spelling bee or you could uh, do a, a term definition activity. So you could throw them different terms associated with nature and they have to explain it. What is wood? <laughs> what is a forest, right? What, what is the difference between a sea and a lake or a sea and an ocean, right? Um, yeah, so that would be it for, uh, for, for, for health. Um, I think I got mixed up between health and nature right there. I mean, I guess for health, it would be better to, uh, to define different words, maybe associated with the body or associated with um, like a, a healthy, active lifestyle.
right? Work-life balance, that could be it as well. And again, if you have higher level students, maybe you could talk about emotional and mental health, yeah? Um, my philosophy with teaching on italki is, uh, you know, let your, your student really sets the limits. Uh, so you could talk about whatever your student is comfortable with, as long as you're comfortable with that. And it helps to actually build their language skills. However, um, it's good from the offset for the first lesson to just assume that, uh, we should play it safe and stay on the safe side. Uh, so maybe of um, maybe just focusing on the cut and dry physical health uh, could be better, unless if the conversation goes into a different direction. All right, number four is travel. So number one, for, first of all, you could start with a bucket list. You can make a bucket list with your students. Think about where they'd like to go. After that, you could do a little travel on a budget activity. So think about which places would be the cheapest to go to. Uh, you could maybe show them an article or a video of a budget traveler and uh, ask your students, how do you think? You could save money while traveling. Have you ever fallen for scams? Have you ever lost money traveling? And then at the end, you could uh, make an itinerary, just a rough I itinerary. Again, if you have uh, low level students, give them a few sample pieces of an itiner itinerary and they could put it together. Yeah. Um, you'll learn how to adapt these and modify these lessons as time goes on. Time, that's the fifth one. So if you want to, you could uh, show them a schedule and have them answer questions about the schedule. Yeah, this could really be good for prepositions of time, especially like, on Monday at two o'clock, right? Um, you can then have them compare that schedule with another schedule. So basically all you need are two pictures of schedules, right? And at the end, you could have them recite their uh, daily routine. If they're a low level student, maybe you could show them an example of a daily, of a daily routine and remember model Okay, modeling is very important for your lessons, especially with lower level students. So if you want them to do an activity and it might be a bit tricky, you should model that beforehand. So explain a little bit of your uh, daily uh, routine, maybe even give them specifics of what you want to hear because a daily routine could be really personal. Um, so I mean, maybe just uh, it could be, what do you do before, uh, you know, before going to work or something like that, right? Or um, how do you get to work? It could be a routine within a routine, a process within a process. Um, and that could be a better way to kind of break it down. You know, it's the first lesson. All you want is a taste of their capabilities and all they want is a taste of your skills. And we're not going to build Rome in a day, but this could be a really good chance for you to build rapport and get started um, on the right foot. Sometimes less is more. You can keep it simple. Um, I know that uh, I have never, of the dozens of teachers that I've had on Aitaki, none of them have done anything like this with me. So, you know, this could be, um, I mean, every student has their own style and every teacher has their own style. I mean, this might not be your student's cup of tea, but I've done this with well over, well over 300 students, uh, these kinds of lessons for trial lessons. And I, I have formed great relationships with my students. I've had one student, however, tell me uh, too many activities. <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, this is the reason why now I actually send, b beforehand I send a document explaining what I do in the trial lesson. Um, I also send a, a message welcoming the student, asking them if they have any questions, telling them they could tell me. And I think just this alone will cover all of your bases, right? Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty. I've also had one student who um, didn't want to do activities. She said she just wanted uh, 30 minutes of conversation and that's completely fine with me as well. So be prepared for this as well. This isn't what 
every student is looking for, but I think it's good to cast a wide net. This is a good chance for you to develop yourself as a teacher. And also, even though not all students want this, I think about 80% of, of students want this, at least, uh, because this is what where I get a lot of my positive feedback from. Um, so if your students are the same as my students, then I think that doing some activities or at least showing that you are capable of this and that, you, uh, that you're willing to put in the time, that could be a good thing, right? So I hope that this helps you out. Those are five uh, custom trial lessons right there. Uh, you could adapt this to any topic that you really want to. The sky is the limit. Um, so best of luck to you. If you have any questions, throw them down in the box. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and click like and keep smiling.